Welcome to the Magical Mommy Monday podcast. We really appreciate you listening. We'll be talking about everyday mom life with some pixie dust from Disney thrown in from time to time. This is a judgment-free zone. We know everyone parents differently, and we're just two moms doing our best as we figure out this whole parenting thing. So now, let's get this party started with today's episode. Welcome to the Magical Mommy Monday podcast. I am Jen, and I am solo this week. So a couple of weeks ago, Angela kind of had to fly solo because in New York, we had a big tropical storm, and my power went out the same day we were supposed to record. And now it's my turn to return the favor. Um, Angela is not feeling great. Hopefully, she feels better soon. But I am here with a very special guest who has been so patient with us. And her name is Donna Zeiger, and I actually came across her posting in a Facebook group because she started an awesome new Instagram account that I immediately followed. (laughs) So I reached out to her and I was like, we have to talk about this because I think you have so many great ideas, especially in this time where people are distance learning or homeschooling or just everything is different for everybody. So we're going to chat about that today. And um, I'll stop talking and shut up a little bit so we can get started. <laughs> Welcome, Donna, to the podcast. Thank, Thank you, you for, being for here. having me. Thank you so much for, ha- for having me. I'm yeah. so excited to be here. Awesome. So can you give us a little background about you? I know you have a PhD in biology, which is amazing. But <laughs> if you kind of tell us your backstory a little bit. Sure, Yeah. So my students call me Dr. Z, and I have been a professor for six years, um, and I have served as program director for the past five years for a biology bachelor's degree that I created um, from the ground up. So I created all the curriculum, um, and I really love that. I love designing curriculum, and I love teaching. Um, And my overarching goal has always been to make STEM accessible. So even with my college students, you know, A lot of times people find it intimidating, science, biology, a lot of the terms. Um, And so, you know, it doesn't have to be. It can be fun. And that's always, you know, my goal. My goal is to reach as many people as possible. So, um, you know, I'm a mom of three. I love to cook and bake when there's not a pandemic going on or travel. (laughs) Yeah. Yes, I miss traveling Uh, too. (laughs) I know. Who doesn't? So sad. (laughs) Um, Yeah. So, you know, I I worked in various labs um, through college, after college. I actually started as a math major. Okay. Um, So, you know, I took a psych class and I just fell in love with the neuroscience, the study of the brain. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I majored in neuroscience and then I worked in lots of labs through college, after college. And um, I saw these grad students who just had this deep understanding of how things work. And I was like, wow, I want to do that. Um, My parents are immigrants and they somehow breed lots of scientists. (laughs) My siblings and I are all scientists. (laughs) That's amazing. Um, and so, you know, I, I just, I really fell in love with biology. I love thinking about why we behave the way we do and how much of it is hardwired or yeah. not. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I went for, you know, I applied for our grad programs. My husband and I actually applied at the same time to PhD program. Nice. So we applied to like 10 schools. <laughs> <laughs> um, we did our PhDs at the same time. Um, so I did my PhD in molecular biology, which is kind of like the small, small parts inside the cell yeah. and how it makes the cell work. Um, and, you know, the best part of my PhD and undergrad always has been um, just teaching. I love teaching yeah. lots of different audiences. So in in grad school, um, there were there were like classes for retired people. I okay. taught retired people. I taught undergrads. So the gamut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this awesome. is, you know, this, this, now we find ourselves in the pandemic. And mm-hmm. so I'm with my kids and yeah. I'm finding myself with a young audience. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And how old are your kids? So my kids are nine, four and a half and baby. 
Okay. Oh my goodness, <laughs> baby. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I have a six-year-old and a three and a half-year-old. Angela oh, wow. also has a six-year-old and a four-year-old. So we're kind of oh, wow. in that yeah mix there. But yeah. that's amazing. Um, truth be yeah. told, in high school, wasn't the best math and science student. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's okay. And I'm so worried about it with like my kids. I'm like, how far will I go with you guys no, before I no. really need a lot of help? But I no, no, no. Love that. <laughs> STEM has kind of like, you know, you didn't hear that when we were growing up. So that the fact Mm -hmm. that this is becoming like a thing is so great because there's so many activities you can do now where it makes learning about science and math fun, which I think is so important and really gets them engaged and, and gets them talking about things and wanting to try new things and wanting to learn more. And it's so much better to me than you go to school, you learn the basics and that's it. You know, there, I don't feel like there was as much of that for us growing up. Do you feel the same way? Yeah, absolutely. I think that there is such a, you know, um, push for engaging students and, you know, it's at all ages, young and old, Mm -hmm. you know, and even with my own son, I see a difference now that I've been doing all these activities with my kids since March he gets really excited about it. And it's okay if you don't have a science background, Mm -hmm. you can get involved too. You know, that's, you can read a little bit about it. You can explore together. Um, But doing that, doing things hands on is just so much more. It really pulls you in and it's a different learning experience. Yeah, definitely. So um, I mentioned, I came across a posting of yours in a, Facebook group. I, I mm-hmm. can't even really remember which one because I'm in too many at this point. <laughs> right? um, but I was like, ooh, this looks interesting. And I went to your page, immediately started following, which by the way, I think at that point, it was only a few weeks ago. And because it had just started, you had a few hundred followers. You're up to like 1,800 followers at this point, which is yeah. amazing. <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised myself. <laughs> right? But And I think it speaks to especially the time we're in where everyone is looking for more resources and more activities. So it's so awesome that you are providing that. Um, what Thank made you. you want to start the account? Yeah. You know, um, it, it, like you said, it's really only a few weeks old. Yeah. Um, you know, when the pandemic hit us uh, in March, shut down, my kids were home and they were Zooming a lot or yeah. on YouTube a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was thinking to myself, okay, how can I get them off the computer and also instill some excitement and happiness? Yes. Um, and, you know, I like to do art. I like to do science. Mm-hmm. And so I was inspired by some activities. I thought of activities and I just got excited. Every time I'd think of something, I couldn't wait to do it (laughs) with my kids. And, um, and they were excited. Like it got to the point where my daughter was like expecting it. Like, you know, mama, when are we doing our activity today? (laughs) (laughs) They keep you on track. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. And you know, they, they were so happy. So I was just taking these natural, you know, photos, videos just for fun. And I looked back at one point and I was like, wow, I have a lot of really happy, fun pictures and videos. Yeah. And since my mission is always to make STEM accessible, I always want to try to help. You know, I, I, I know that sometimes it can be a little intimidating. I hear even other parents, they'll do a fun activity and they'll be like, this looks so pretty, but I have no idea how it works. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I just feel like it's so important for everybody to understand science and to feel like they can do it. I wanted to empower parents to get excited to yeah. find a way to, you know, to, to do these activities, projects, experiments with their kids and learn together and yeah. reach young kids too. So I just, I love it. I love seeing you know, other people doing these activities or experiments and sending pictures, asking yeah. questions. It's just so fun. <laughs> yeah, no, it's so great. Um, and yeah. do you, do you find your kids have one that maybe they've wanted to repeat a few times or a favorite? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. For sure. So, um, so one that I haven't yet posted that is coming, we've done like, I've done so many. I have to, time is my limiting factor. Yes. <laughs> for all of us. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, DNA is basically the set of instructions for 
how we are the way we are, you know, like eye color is kind of the most common example. So my son and I talked about DNA for a while. And then I said to him, why don't we take DNA out of something, you know, like a cell? Yeah. So it's called a DNA extraction. It's done all the time in labs and we did it. And he was so excited like leading up to it, it was like every day, mom, when are we <laughs> doing this? <laughs> yeah. And then since then he wanted to do it again. Um, you know, he just, he wants to explore everything like a piece of fish. Oh my gosh, does this have DNA? Can we look at the DNA in there? Yeah. Um, and there are lots of other activities since then that we've done with DNA. Um, but he's also been excited about other things too. You know, the, um, I made a fractions puzzle okay. um, where I cut circles out of cardboard And then I cut pieces, you know, like a half, a third, a sixth, and I painted each different pieces a certain color. Yeah. And I made multiple circles. So you can put the pieces together in lots of ways and Mm -hmm. you can kind of explore fractions and see that there are lots of ways to make a whole. Yeah. And he actually, like, I would come out and just see my kids, both of them, my four and a half year old too, mm-hmm. sitting on the floor and like putting together these circles. They just, yeah. they loved it. Like again and again. And then my son was asking me, hey, can you like make me flashcards and make a game out of this? Like, you know, how many quarters are in a half? Mm-hmm. I was like, sure, <laughs> <laughs> why not? <laughs> yeah, I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> So, cause it was something we were talking about when he was putting the pieces together, you know, like, Oh, look at this, a half and a quarter, huh? Yeah. You know, you can put two quarter pieces, mm-hmm. and you, get, you know? Um, so, so that was a, a favorite, yeah. the numbers in the driveway. Um, I painted numbers in our driveway really big yeah. <laughs> and really vibrantly with just a homemade DIY, super cheap, super easy paint. Mm-hmm. And, um, <laughs> And we we invented all sorts of games together, you know, and yeah. that the purpose was to like look at multiplication and practice mm-hmm. multiplication, but doing it in a fun way. Yeah. And so, you know, it happened to be a whole week without any rain, not a drop. Oh, yeah. And like every day we were going outside and the kids just wanted to hop around on all these numbers. And then like the neighbors would walk by with their dogs and like, they'd be like, what is that? You know? <laughs> So everyone's explaining like just another math. day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so those I would say like are the top three. Like the DNA was like huge, huge hit. And my son can't get enough of that. The fractions, um, they still pull out, you know, they love it. And yeah. the numbers in the driveway. And I already I'm thinking of you know, there'll be, there'll be something, some other surprise waiting for them in the driveway. Soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think that visual aspect is so important for them because I think that's what really draws them to it where they're not even realizing what they're learning. You know, it, yes. I mean, the nine-year-olds yeah. probably more so than your four-year-olds, but it kind of helps you learn better and it sticks to your memory better. I think if you have that visual yeah. aspect. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah. that And then painting numbers and big bright colors she can't go wrong with that <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if it evokes some feeling too like we tend to think about science as this really dry boring you know like Ferris Bueller you know, <laughs> boys. but it's not it doesn't yeah. have to be it's explosions and color and why the world works yeah. and you know I think if you can kind of tap into that and show your kids that it's not just like the dry, boring equations, Yeah, um, you know, and get them to feel something, feel excited and, you know, express themselves a little too. Yeah. Um, I, I think it really, it, you're right. I think it really kind of cements the understanding and the memory of yes. that experience in a yeah. different way. Yeah, definitely. I, <laughs> we were, um, after March, once we were home, you know, we were kind of doing a mix of, whatever kindergarten work my son was getting, but plus I had the three-year-old. So I was trying to keep her engaged too. So we kind of created like a little space of homeschool kind of sort. (laughs) And I was just Uh looking up Pinterest ideas and doing different Mm -hmm. things. And they had named that Mrs. Mommy's class. Uh, (laughs) But but there have been things since then that all of a sudden one of them will say like, oh, hey, remember when we did such and such in Mrs. Mommy's class and we learned about this and like... I just, it stops me in my tracks of like, I almost didn't remember that. And that's amazing. You did. Okay. This is working. (laughs) But it's just, it's, it's great to see them 
want to learn and and want to see different things and try different things. And, you know, it's a, definitely a hectic time and mm-hmm. stressful for a lot of parents, but there are these moments that we're getting that we probably wouldn't otherwise to really see them learning. And when usually that's only done in the classroom, aside from some homework where you're usually like, okay, you have to do your homework, (laughs) but we're kind of getting thrown into it. And the experience is that much better, I think for it, but yeah. yeah, you know, my, my kids used to come home, I mean, at best, you know, four o'clock. Yeah. They're exhausted. Mm. They're zonked, you know, <laughs> yep. snack, get ready for dinner time. It's like the whole routine. You know, yeah. the weekends were also so busy. This is like a totally different life. Yes. I never have the time to do these kinds of activities or think of these experiments, you know, yeah. talk about it with them. Yeah. And, you know, the pandemic has been a lot of things, but I do think that this has been a really unique opportunity. Um, mm-hmm. And it's been really fun. I, I've connected with the kids in a very new way. Yeah. And that's been really exciting. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Are you <laughs> going back to the classroom in September? Nope. No. Nope. Okay. I'm taking a break this year. I'm okay. taking a break and nice. I'm going to be with the kids. Yeah. Okay. We're, you know, they're going to be home and, uh, you know, baby can't just take care of himself all day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They need a little yeah. something extra. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's great. And you'll yeah. be thinking of even more ideas along the way, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have a whole, you know, I'm starting to organize like weeks and gear it towards their interests. Like yeah. all of a sudden my kids love marine biology, the ocean. Yeah. You know, they're so interested in it. So let's learn about dolphins, how mm-hmm. they hear, how they see, yeah. you know? Um, so that's yeah, awesome. lots of things coming. Yeah. 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 I feel like that's a good age for that too. My son, uh, towards the end of the year, as he was um, practicing writing, one of his writing assignments was to write a persuasive speech and mm-hmm. out of nowhere, he was like, what if we write about how people shouldn't litter at the beach to save the turtles? And I was like, wow. Wait, where did you even, <laughs> I don't even know that we've ever talked about that. Or And so he got really into that for a while. But it's so cool to see them like, maybe they've heard about something at some point and it like sticks and they want to run with it. It's so great. But yeah. My son knows. will like, he'll be going to bed and he'll be lying in bed and he just ha- comes up with like crazy questions like yeah I mean he's really thinking about DNA like you know can it control us and how do we know the order and yeah so you know and and I have to I I want to explain it to him and it's just it's triggering all of these questions and it's clearly he's clearly like sitting and thinking about it yeah long after we're done yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool it's so yeah cool. these kids are so smart I They're know so smart. and I mean uh it sounds like your kids have some pretty good genes uh no. so they're definitely <laughs> gonna be all their brains are, are definitely going yeah no it's all kids are smart yeah. it's amazing they blow me away I'm like yeah. Dude, I don't remember being this inquisitive or the, you know, just, and, and maybe you were about random things, but just how their brains work and how they see the world and how it affects them and the questions they come up with. It, it's, it amazes me every day. I mean, it's so yeah. cool. I, I yeah. think that, you know, in some ways we underestimate kids actually. Yeah. I think mm-hmm. that they're just, they're so capable, you yes. know, like your son. Mm-hmm. I mean, how cool to think of these turtles, Yeah, you know, and Whenever I went, when always when I was teaching college, you know, I'm doing labs, I was always thinking to myself, like, huh, you know, there are ways to make this age appropriate, mm-hmm. like to get the basic concept to a younger age. Yeah. It's doable, you yes. know? Mm-hmm. And I think it's it's just exciting to expose them at a young age and get them excited. That's the number yeah. one goal. Just get yes. them excited. Mm-hmm. You know, even my daughter, I mean, she, you know. For example, she's learning primary colors, right? Mm-hmm. Like yellow and blue. What does that make? Right. <laughs> and so there are ways to kind of fold that into science. Yeah. And, you know, without even noticing. And then she kind of thinks about it, you know, yeah. and we'll talk about it on a four-year-old level. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. that, and that's yeah. always a little tricky at times. So, you know, when they do come up with these big questions or these grand ideas, you're like, okay how can I explain this in a way that it's Mm -hmm. not going to totally overwhelm you and Mm -hmm. keep you interested at the same time? Because I don't want to 
explain it where you're like, uh, okay, because they they brush me off sometimes with like, that sounds like grown up stuff or that's a grown up <laughs> show. And I'm like, it's just people and not cartoons. So, but stick with it. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know, so if parents haven't done any k- kind of science experiments or STEM activities mm-hmm. overall, where do you think is like a really good place for them to start? Yeah, so um, one thing is just supplies. So you can buy just basic, basic supplies. And you probably already have this, you know, in your art closet, Mm -hmm. you know, glue, popsicle sticks, paint. I go through a lot of food dye. (laughs) I've gone through boxes of food dye Mm -hmm. and not for eating. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But another place to start is to see your recyclables. Mm -hmm. because, you know, I use so many things and especially today, you know, in this age where we're getting things from Amazon constantly, save the cardboard, save all the delivery packaging materials, Mm -hmm. that stuff inspires me. Um, So starting kind of small, you know, um, I have one activity for like a younger age where if you just have a white crayon and Mm -hmm. watercolor paint and a white page, you can just draw with your white crayon, any message, Mm -hmm. and give your kid watercolor paint and what will happen is that the watercolor will stick to the white paper where there's no crayon and so as they're coloring they'll kind of see this hidden message come out my daughter just I had to make like 20 of these yeah (laughs) (laughs) make me another one make me another one so cool Uh (laughs) uh-huh she loved it you know yeah there are lots of these kinds of activities that are just they're simple they don't require a lot of time investment or money right it's just it's something simple to kind of spark a little excitement um in both of you like yeah Mm -hmm. it's so fun as a parent to watch your kids so excited yeah um you know and then another activity that's good for really every age um you can explain in different ways is when I have on capillary action where you just, you take cups of water Mm -hmm. and you take paper towels, you drop food coloring into each cup of water and the paper towels serve as a bridge between the cups of water to mix colors. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I started with the primary colors. I love my primary colors. (laughs) (laughs) And I made a little paper towel bridge between yellow and blue, between blue and red, et cetera. Um, and then what happens is that, you know, we all know when you use a paper towel, water crawls up that paper towel. Mm-hmm. And when it's food colored water, it's really pretty to watch. Yeah. And so because there's a bridge, the two colors meet in the middle and they can mix. And now the cup of water in between two primary colors will change colors. Right. So yellow and blue becomes green. So you've got your whole rainbow of colors there. Yeah. It's just, it's so simple. You just, you know, yeah. cups water, food coloring, paper towel, not a huge time investment. It's yeah. not like scary or stressful to set up. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and it, it's just the same exact way that plants get water up from their roots to their leaves. It's just called capillary action. Right. Um, so that's just, you know, I would say start small and start simple and like, yeah. don't overwhelm yourself. It's not the idea is to get both of you excited and to start talking. Yeah. And see what excites your kid, you know, right. and then, mm-hmm. you know, if, if how things work excites your kid, great. Then, you know, look for ideas there. If it's biology, look, you know, look for ideas there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I, and I think especially in this new world, I mean, the, the parents that are working, it's 10 times, I stay home with my kids. So it's 10 times harder if you are a working parent and juggling time and schedules is so hard. But if you can carve out some time in your day to mix the assignments they're getting from school with some of these activities, I think it helps ease the stress for everyone because you're learning more about your child and what they are into because Maybe they're not into practicing their letters, but they're really into learning about colors and you can do different things, you know, and, and it kind of eases some of (laughs) what's going on right now because it adds a little fun to your day and for both of you. And it, it's a way for you guys to connect. And I think that's so important too. It's not about, it's not always about the school assignments you have to do or the learning you have to do. It's also mixing in, well, what do you want to learn about? And let's, you know, and, and it, 
also gives them something to look forward to where it's not just I'm sitting doing worksheets or I'm sitting on a Zoom call. <laughs> you know, there's yeah. there's other things to change up the day a little bit. So I think it's 100%. so awesome. Yeah, it's so great 100%. to have accounts like yours out there because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what I would find. You know, I mean the spring, the summer, you know, even if I was working and then my kids were doing their, you know, the Zoom thing or mm-hmm. their worksheets, like everybody needed a little bit of a break and you yes. can get up, you can shake it off, you can do some jumping jacks, but yeah. you know, getting kind of jumping into like a really hands-on activity, seeing things change and talking about it and, mm-hmm. you know, kind of getting excited about some new subject that you've been hearing about, you know, in the abstract on right. paper reading, you know, doing it together. It kind of like added a little bit of excitement into both of our days. It was something yeah. just that was a relief for yes. both of us. It's something that we all looked forward to together. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's so great. Yeah. Um, yeah. For parents that are now going to, some have chosen to fully homeschool this year. Some mm-hmm. are doing distance learning. Some will have hybrid. I mean, there's so mm-hmm. many different <laughs> schooling <laughs> happen, schooling ideas happening this year. Do you have any tips for parents that will be, home with their kids more or trying to juggle everything at once? Do you have any things you that have worked for you or? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, so I, I have taught classes, you know, college classes, mm-hmm. both in person and online. Yeah. So although that's at the college level, I can kind of compare those yeah. two. And I can tell you that I think the number one thing that troubles me is when I see kind of an attempt to mirror exactly what happens in person to online yeah because they're just very very different Mm -hmm. and you know online has some strengths too it has a really bad reputation but Mm -hmm. (laughs) there are some ways to kind of use it to your advantage there are games for example you can play online Mm -hmm. um you know like 20 questions for example somebody else there are ways to make it kind of exciting yeah um but you know just that just the shift in mindset that it's not the same thing. And likewise, homeschooling, if you're working together at home, it's also not a group setting. Mm -hmm. You can actually get through a lot more things faster. You can do more intricate activities. So that's great. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, in terms of choosing like what to do, you really have to get to know your kid and what kind of learner they are. Yeah. You know, some kids love worksheets and some kids hate them mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah. some kids are okay on zoom and some kids really can't do zoom yeah you know so identifying like the kind of learner that your kid is is mm-hmm. really important I think it's safe to say that every kid thrives with um engaging activities yeah I think that's always fun it's always exciting it's always a nice break from whatever you do yeah <laughs> um so you know and then the, the the number one driver should be what is your kid interested in? Yeah. You know, so my kids, both of them, surprisingly, um, really just, you know, like I said, they've really gotten into the ocean. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I got books for them on the ocean. I printed things, you know, about dolphins, about tide pools. Yeah. I have collections of shells in the house just because you know, in previous summers, we've been able to yeah. go to the beach <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. for vacation. Um, <laughs> and, you know, we talked about all these things and they are really driving the conversation and they're asking me mm-hmm. and that's what keeps them excited. And honestly, I'm, I, it's kind of shocking to see how they're thriving mm-hmm. um, in a way that's different than they ever have. Yeah. You know, my older son, my nine year old, he is making these Lego animation movies. He just, he loves it. Yeah. <laughs> he really, that's awesome. And he does a great job. And so he's learning like editing. He's, mm-hmm. you know, learning videography. He's thinking about little film tricks, you know. So you got to just, you know, and then, and then, and then we can kind of incorporate in there STEM. You mm-hmm. know, I can explain to him why the math and the science are important. Green screen technology. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. You know, and he loves it. So really kind of just going after your kids' interests. <laughs> yeah. No, and I think it and it makes your life easier where you're not forcing them like, hey, I saw this activity, you're gonna do it and you're gonna love it. <laughs> you know? like, they're, not, sure. they're not gonna like all the activities you may find, sure. but they, you know, find what works and then find similar ones and keep trying to go down that path, like you said. It 
it really helps you as a parent, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Although I will say that, you know, at the same time, every once in a while, like, I'll just set up the table mm-hmm. and I'll just have them come out and they're like, what are we doing? What are we doing? And like, it doesn't matter. You know, they, we've been talking about dolphins and this is a complete change in, yeah. you know, course. And just the surprise element is mm-hmm. exciting to them. And like, it doesn't matter what we do. Like, that's also a great thing to do. Yeah. So just to kind of set something up and introduce them, you know, have them come and just play around and do the activity. Like yeah. they'll, they'll love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes even just giving them all the cardboard and going, here you go. Here's some glue sticks. Here's some crayons. Go for it. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Make a mess if you want. (laughs) For sure. For sure. Yeah. You know, I, I, we, I save like egg cartons Mm -hmm. and so, you know, we'll sit and we'll paint them together and talk about what they can become, Mm -hmm. you know, and then that evolves into what game can we make out of it? Yeah. You know, counting game, whatever there are ways to, to kind of, to incorporate it um, everywhere. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Do you think you will, do you have future plans for the Instagram account? Do you think you will grow it? Will it become its own YouTube channel someday? (laughs) (laughs) I have had requests. Yeah, (laughs) I'm sure. (laughs) I've had requests for YouTube. Um, I've had requests for Facebook because not everybody has Instagram, which Mm -hmm. I completely understand. Yeah. I am learning it myself. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah. You know, I I think kind of um, never say never. I'm I'm definitely growing it. I'm definitely, I have all sorts of ideas for like themes, you mm-hmm. know, um, to explore and different activities to explore within a theme. Yeah. Um, and yeah, definitely YouTube uh, might be down the road. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, you know, I, I really just want to, I do really just want to reach people and just, you know, make science just fun and accessible. Yeah. Um, so if that's YouTube, then <laughs> yeah. Now that you've been with your kids who are younger, are you missing the big kids that you were teaching as well? <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. You know, I mean, I still never like you know. I'm constantly emailing, and I mean, all summer I've been working, and I've been teaching a class, and yeah. um, you know, lots of recommendation letters and angst about the next steps yes. and guidance. <laughs> so I still feel like I'm connected with them, mm-hmm. but definitely I miss seeing them in person. Definitely. I miss, you know, teaching, um, in a real lecture hall. Yeah. Um, and you know, I, I, I do miss teaching at that level for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's, you know, I try to kind of bring in some of the topics sneakily. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my kids. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely, I definitely miss teaching at that level yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I really appreciate, um, how your brain works because <laughs> I will say some activities or I'll send, you know, pictures to family of something that the kids did. And they were like, wow, what a great idea. You, you always think of everything. I'm like, I don't think of anything. I am so <laughs> thankful for people like you who put oh. things up that I can then just go, I think I can do that one. Okay, let's try that. <laughs> you know? But it's, it you're making so many parents look better, really. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Well, you know, I, you know what? Getting like the pictures and the videos from parents, it yeah. just, it really makes my day. I just love it. I love seeing other kids get all excited and yeah. doing these little projects. It's just, it's so fun. Yeah. Um, no, it's so awesome. You know, yeah. And I, I mean, I really, I do love curriculum design. You know, it's like yeah. my special little I, I love thinking of games and thinking of like an interesting way to teach yeah. something. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just, I, I happen to really love it. Um, and I get inspired everywhere. Honestly, yeah. I get inspired everywhere. You know, people, so many people are doing so many cool things. Yeah. It's, it's an awesome place to thank goodness, right? Thank goodness. We're not in the Spanish flu where we don't have yeah. internet, right? And space time to connect to people. Oh my goodness. And, you know, we have all of these resources at our hand yes. that we can, we, like, I feel like we're good. We're, you know, we're busy at home. We're, yeah. we're doing a lot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just stay busy and keep 
thinking of new ideas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, and I think that the kids are really learning and, and thriving. And yeah, that's my number one, you know, when this hit in March, this pandemic hit, mm-hmm. you know, I was, I was thinking to myself, okay, how can we make this a little more joyous? How yeah. can we, you know, and, and the kids were missing the socialization with sure. their friends. Mm-hmm. I have found that, um, you know, I cannot replace their friends, mm-hmm. you know, and I, I don't want to, yeah. I want to have their <laughs> friends. Yeah. But I, I do think that, you know, this piece wasn't there before. I yeah. mean, of course I did things with my kids, but sure. not at this level. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so like adding this new element has kind of, it's changed our bond. It's changed our relationship mm-hmm. and it's, it's added a lot too, you know, and it's, I see my kids, my daughter, you know, four years old back in March, she was used to going to school every day. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, the next day I was like, well, when am I going back to school? Yeah. And, you know, mm-hmm. and now it's, you know, I mean, she still loves her school. She still misses her school and her friends yeah. and thank goodness. Mm-hmm. But, um, but she also really looks forward to our time. Yeah. And, you know, like we felt like that memory is going to be special for yes. a while. You yeah, know, it's gonna definitely. Be- and yeah, you, yeah. you got to hold on to the the good stuff in all of this and yeah, look at the good, yeah. those good moments and those <laughs> special little silver linings that weren't there before. It really it yeah. helps get through the tougher days or the days everyone's just over it all. <laughs> you know? For sure, for yeah. sure, for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah, and you know, it's like Monday to Friday, it's like Monday, you know, okay, like you can do it. Yeah. Friday, it's like, okay, I need a break. <laughs> oh, good. It's not just me. Okay. I'm like, oh, no, new week. No. Let's go. This is going to be, I am flipping the switch this week. It's going to be great. And then Friday, I'm like, I don't, I don't know if I can do it anymore. Oh, yeah. Who, who, who isn't like that? I mean, yeah. this, isn't, this is so hard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. on that note, a yeah. completely separate topic, but yeah. you mentioned travel. So where do you miss traveling to? <laughs> oh gosh, I miss traveling to the beach. I'm a beach person. Okay. I mm. love, love, love the beach. And like, if I could live at the beach, I don't know why I don't live at the beach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm questioning that too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, maybe it's time. Maybe this is a sign that I should be living at the beach and doing all yeah, of this. Really? Yeah. <laughs> where are yeah, you located? I um, I'm in Boston. I'm in Boston Boston area. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Nice. We do have beaches. The water's very cold. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I love warm ocean beaches. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're lucky to have beaches at least. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but of course, right now it's not exactly the ideal time to go. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but I love traveling to beaches, and I also love traveling to Europe. Love, nice. love, love Europe. Excellent. Yeah. I mean. Don't get me wrong, with three kids, not that I have been since <laughs> my honeymoon. Right, sure. <laughs> but it's but still there. It. <laughs> the love exactly. remains. Exactly. Yeah. Anything exactly. that you did pre-kids. My my son is very into the States right now. He has memorized all the oh, capitals. Please. He is completely obsessed. So on a lot of the maps, he's also seeing Mexico. And he's like, have I been to Mexico? And I said, no, no, mommy and daddy went to Mexico a few times. He's like, where was I? I'm like, yeah, no, that was before you. And every once in a while, he'll just yell out like, you and daddy went to Mexico. I'm like, oh, we sure did. Yeah, it was good times. It was good. <laughs> no, <laughs> I know. I know. I, I've like thought about, you know, like uh, people are renting the RVs mm-hmm. and driving all around. We yes. didn't have a baby that could be an option. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah. Like traveling around the States, it sounds amazing. Yes. Not so much with younger kids. But. <laughs> I know. And then you watch like tiny homes on HGTV yes. and I'm like, yes. should we just do it? Let's just do <laughs> it with two kids and a dog. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I have been tempted by it all. This pandemic oh, is like, right? yeah, like get a tiny home, go into the woods, like bam. Right. We're at play every day outside. Exactly. Nature. <laughs> perfect park it at the beach sometimes exactly. drive it to disney world whatever maybe not now but you know <laughs> oh I, I would love to i would love to drive there yeah right <laughs> not quite right now but yes florida yeah <sighs> Good. Yeah, if only. We if can only. dream. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. Well, can you give all the plugs? <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. So I am on Instagram at Dr. Z at home. Um, so DRZ at home. And um, so you can find everything there. And I am 
working on creating a Facebook page. That's the first start. Um, and everything will be there as well. And then, you know, probably I'll end up migrating from there. <laughs> um, you know, I, I might maybe do YouTube, um, you know, some videos with my kids um, yeah. and just have fun with it. Yeah. Um, but that'll be that'll be my my name everywhere. Dr. D at home. <laughs> awesome. Well, there's yeah. plenty to look forward to and you have great activities up already. So if you Thank haven't you. checked them out, be sure to check Dr. Z at home <laughs> on Instagram and start start getting those wheels turning for the new school year. And, <laughs> and even <laughs> now with the last little bit of summer we have left. But thank you so much for being on. And I know Angela sends her best and she's so sorry she missed you but maybe when you have your youtube channel you'll have to come back and we'll have to talk about uh, it again <laughs> <laughs> with pleasure thank you so much for having me this is so much fun thank you for listening to this episode of the magical mommy monday podcast we hope you enjoyed it you can find us on twitter at magic mom monday and on Instagram at Magical Mommy Mondays. The music you heard on this podcast was written and produced by Matt Harvey. We'll see you next time.